education with emphasis on improving quality in all areas. We are working diligently to ensure that the gap in gender enrollment disparity is closed by 2014 and to provide free education and an equitable chance for all to be literate by 2015 and above. Mr. President, we must ensure that the post-2015 development agenda builds on the important progress of the MDGs and is expanded to cover broader sustainable development issues as agreed in Rio. Therefore, your choice of the theme for this session, quote, the post-2015 development agenda, setting the stage, unquote, is indeed apt, timely, and thought-provoking. Clear, time-bound, targeted, and measurable global benchmarks are crucial if we are to realize our desired objectives. Mr. President, protecting African livelihoods requires international, regional, and country approaches that recognize and act on the overlap of conflicts orchestrated by foreign powers and severe weather hazards. The Gambia family believes that mitigating the adverse effects of climate change and putting an immediate end to the massive looting of African natural resources by Western multinational companies calls for timely and decisive global response. It is a challenge that should unite us, not divide us. The Gambia is of the firm opinion that Africa should play an active role in shaping the goals based on its own development priorities and common interests. Mr. President, the biggest threat to human existence are basically three and are a consequence of human behavior which are ungodly attributes. These are one, excessive greed and therefore addiction to gather material wealth by any means necessary, mostly through violent or immoral schemes. Two, obsession with world domination by any means, including the resolve to use nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons to achieve this fanciful dream. The third, Mr. President, is homosexuality in all its forms and manifestations, which though very evil, anti-human as, as well as anti-Allah is being promoted as a human right by some powers. All these three have nothing to do with climate change and are more deadly than all natural disasters put together. Mr. President, the first one led to not only colonization and the plundering of African and Asian human and material resources, but also led to two devastating wars among the Western powers that be, and unfortunately were wrongly termed World War I and II. Colonialism was maintained by subjugation and massive looting of resources in the colonies, leading to the impoverishment and destitution of hundreds of millions of colonial subjects. From the 13th century up to the middle part of the 20th century, the notion of human rights, good governance, and democracy were philosophies that were forbidden to Africans. Any African under the colonial government who advocated for this ended up either at the gallows, in a mass grave, or rotted in a colonialist built dungeon called prison. This was during the colonial era, when the African continent was treated like an abandoned game park, and Africans were treated worse than animals. Today, after fighting for our freedom and liberating our continent, 
we are being prescribed a new religion, democracy, human rights, and good governance by descendants of the same colonial powers. Present-day Africans cannot be hoodwinked by anyone anymore, and we are determined to defend our independence and dignity and take control of our natural resources at any cost and by any means necessary. Mr. President, coming to the second threat, obsession with world domination, we have seen the unprecedented development of deadly nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, as well as other weapons of mass murder by the same powers. We all agree that all forms of human tragedy and catastrophe emanate from the same West. They spend more money on killer technologies than on medical and agricultural technology up to this day. If they unleash a third world war, God forbid, that would put an end to human existence on planet Earth, including this United Nations itself. For the third one, Mr. President, we know for a fact that all living things need to reproduce for posterity. They become extinct when they can no longer reproduce. Therefore, you will all agree with me that any person in promoting the end of human reproduction must be promoting human extinction. Could this be called promoting human rights when you advocate for a definitive end to human reproduction and procreation? Those who promote homosexuality want to put an end to human existence. It is becoming an, <clears throat> an epidemic, and we Muslims and Africans will fight to end this behavior in our countries. We will never accept this. We want a brighter future for humanity and the continuous existence of humanity on this planet. Therefore, we will never tolerate any agenda that clearly calls for human extinction. Mr. President, peace and security are inextricably linked to development. The Gambia continues to ab abide by and live on this principle, which has warranted my government's relentless commitment to peace initiatives under the aegis of the African Union and ECOWAS, which successfully culminated in a democratically elected government in Mali a few weeks ago. I seize this opportunity, therefore, to congratulate the brotherly people of Mali for giving a peace a chance by electing a government through democratic means. With more concerted efforts, Mr. President, through consultations and dialogue, we shall also so soon witness a lasting solution to the political impasse in Guinea-Bissau. I am also equally happy at the work currently being undertaken by the African Union High Level Panel on Egypt aimed at achieving inclusive and peaceful transition through dialogue, compromise, reconciliation, and tolerance. My government will continue to use its membership of the Peace and Security Council of the African Union to propose peaceful measures which will facilitate enhanced engagements with a view to acquiring the desired results in our common quest for lasting stability in the African continent. However, the present trend across the world casts serious doubt about the effectiveness of conflict prevention and management mechanisms adopted by regional organizations and, most importantly, the United Nations. Instead of acting as an effective mechanism for conflict prevention and resolution, as well as advancing global security, the Security Council has become a barrier to progress, peace, and security in some instances where lopsided decisions can only be classified as racist and misguided and therefore unacceptable. Mr. President, Africa's legitimate quest for full representation on the Security Council 
continues to be a strong one in that 